It Could Happen by Carol Moore. One day, overnight, the world turned violet. Just about everything was violet. From the sky and ocean and mountains to the trees and animals and people. From the tallest skyscraper to the tiniest ant. People sat around looking at each other, wondering if they were dreaming. But no one woke up and things stayed violet. All except for a single blue jay who hadn't changed colors and remained the brightest blue. Being the only thing in the world that wasn't violet, he was caught and put in a cage. The people were shocked and some were afraid and some were amused and some thought it funny because along with everyone else, the president was very violet. Whole families were violet, as were teachers, movie stars, doctors, nurses, gas station attendants, the Queen of England, the President of Mozambique, taxi drivers, everyone. And people went from place to place in their violet cars and buses and rode violet bikes and sat on violet furniture and ate violet food. Even Hershey's candy bars had turned all violet, as had Skittles and M&Ms. Girls generally thought this was yucky, but some boys thought it was pretty neat. The smartest scientists in the world gathered together to figure it out. Was there something wrong with people's eyes? Was it a trick of nature? They did studies and tests and analyzed and evaluated and, did, and wrote article after article, but they couldn't explain it. And no longer could people say they felt blue over green with envy or had a green thumb. So what they said and how they said it began to change. Some people said violet was now the most important color in the world because it was everywhere. Others said violet had no importance because there was too much of it. And people argued and discussed, joined clubs, held debates, wrote books, produced movies, all about the issue of the importance or unimportance of the color violet. The color of the blue jay became a big issue because he had such a little bit of blue and the world had such a whole lot of violet. And people argued about the importance of that. Some said the blue jay must be a very special bird, or maybe not a bird at all because he alone had stayed his true color. Others said this was silly. The blue jay ate bird seed and drank water and fluffed his feathers and that other than his special color, he was still just a, blue, a bird. Exactly one year after the day the world turned violet, people awoke and found the world had turned yellow, all except the blue jay. In some ways, a yellow world isn't much different from a violet world. People simply said yellow instead of violet when they talked about things. Only now, the blue jay was even more important than ever because he alone had stayed blue. And people argued about what that meant. People came for miles just to get a look at him. For the next two years, after the world had turned violet and then yellow, the world turned two new colors. First orange and then pink. And still the blue jay stayed blue which caused even more disagreement until the fifth year when the world turned blue. The first thing people asked was, what about the blue jay? Was he still blue? Yes, he was still blue. No longer were there two colors in the world, but just one, the color blue. And because the blue jay was now the same color as everyone and everything else, people lost interest. Now that the blue jay was neither more nor less important than anyone else, crowds stopped coming. So six months into the year, the world had turned blue. Someone let him out of his cage and he flew off looking happy to be free. And the next day, the world regained its rainbow of color as if nothing had happened. Soon, this, at first this was a novelty, but soon people forgot that the world had once turned violet. They forgot the world had once turned yellow, then orange, then pink, and then blue. But on occasion, they would wonder where the blue jay had gone, and how he was doing, and most importantly, was he still blue, and what it all meant.